Lebanon is facing an unprecedented financial crisis. This amid months of widespread public discontent and now confronted with the COVID-19 outbreak and its potential economic repercussions. Now, just to give you a quick picture, Lebanon's debt is among the largest in the world. In fact, uh, earlier in March, it failed to repay 1.2 billion US dollars in outstanding bonds. The country is also struggling to cope with dwindling foreign currency reserves and double-digit inflation. Now, additionally, businesses across Lebanon have already been shutting at a rapid rate and now all non-essential businesses are ordered to close down as a result of the pandemic. Then there are what we call the day workers, the laborers. Their immediate future hangs in the balance. That's if they're not able to make a living, which is the case at the moment. Lastly, according to officials, a local health system will struggle to cope if cases dramatically increase. Now, for more on this story, I'd like to cross to Dan Azi, uh, who previously served as chairman and chief executive officer at Standard Chartered Bank. That's SAL. He joins us from Beirut. Dan, thank you so much for being with us. Talk us through the impact that uh, COVID-19 will have on what's already an extremely frail economy. Well, if you if you think about the case in Lebanon about two months ago, um, we you know because of the capital controls, we couldn't travel. We couldn't buy new cars, new electronics, new imports, stuff like that. So when the coronavirus hit the world, uh, it effectively prevented everyone in the world from traveling, from buying new stuff, from buying new cars, etc. It kind of put, you know, you stopped the whole world economy and ground it to a halt. So in, in many, many ways, all the corona did for us from an economic perspective is that it re-emphasized the capital controls, but it also sort of made us in solidarity with the whole world. So in, in some ways, it it is uh, ironically a slightly positive in that it makes capital controls easier. It makes the things we were missing because of capital controls not as bad because everyone from the you know United States to Europe is feeling the same thing we are. So in some ways, in a, in a sort of a, a, you know ironic way, it's it's a slight positive. It's interesting. You're saying it's ironically positive, but of course there will also be the negative repercussions. Well, you know, you mentioned in your report about the number, you know, the, the I guess the uh, ceiling and the number of, of cases that hospitals can take in and so forth. And frankly, that's a problem anywhere in the world. Um, the Again, back to the good news part, if you look at the, the coronavirus and if you look at the Spanish flu of 1918, 100 years ago, effectively, we haven't really advanced all that much. It's, it's exactly the same type of procedures that we're using, whether we, you live in the most advanced countries in the world or the, the most backward countries in the world, which is, you know, wash your hands, social distancing, stuff like that, which is which doesn't necessarily give you any particular advantage if you are an advanced country. In fact, in some ways, uh, countries that are a bit more totalitarian can deal with it a bit better. Like, for example, if you look at the Chinese have nipped it in the bud to a large extent, or at least slowed it down. So in the same way in Lebanon, if it's all a matter of trying to transmit the information to the to you know to different people to to take the 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 measures seriously so in some ways again it's something that can be dealt with uh, much easier than if it were totally dependent upon technology Dan Azi, thank you so much for your insights on ironically what could be the positive impact of the coronavirus on Lebanon's economy